Hello everyone, welcome back to Elden Ring. You might be wondering why I'm in the Altus Plateau. The reason is that in today's episode we're going to be going into the sort of bottom area of Mount Gelmir, uh, which is accessed through here, past where I fought this uh, Tibia Mariner. You go this way and that's how you get to this castle and the more important thing which is uh, Azur's corpse. Since the last episode, one of the things I've done is I cleared out that cave we found. This one, the volcano cave, it was very short, uh, very short, picked up a couple of items. As well as the more important thing, I got some souls which allowed me to level up actually twice. And I put both of those into my intelligence. So we're going to be taking a horsey ride here, that's going to be uh, objective number one. This is a fairly lengthy ride here, but you get to see some scenic shit, uh, that's for sure. Man, the lighting is so weird on my face cam today. I was gonna say I don't know what's going on, but I know what's going on today. It's just weird out today. It's still warm, uh, but it rained today and it's just there's like clouds and overcast and all that. So, you know, oh well, we deal with it. I haven't been like killing these things and people always tell me I should and the other thing is I just realized that I'm whoa oh yeah there's this thing so yeah I, I'm still on the wrong not wrong but not ideal setup with my flasks that does a metric fuck ton of damage anyways having four flasks is good for bosses uh, but for things like this, uh, just going through the overworld, it's complete overkill. It's not necessary to have four crimson flasks. Gotta have them basilisks though. God damn. Yeah, that's the thing that sucks about Glintstone Comet. It, the accuracy is absolutely terrible. So these things, they has death blight which is not the best and that was the wrong spell uh, that somehow worked out and is death blight is yeah it's just shitty insta kill I mean you gotta have an insta kill mechanic right but one of our stats I don't know which one increases the resistance to it. I barely had any death blight resistance on my first playthrough and that actually made things fairly fairly difficult. I'm always so tempted. How many stone sword keys do I have? Four! Okay, I actually have quite a few. Yeah, we'll use them. We'll use them. We'll check out what the hell this is. I usually tend to have... Like barely any... Oh, it's a proper cave. Barely any... Uh, stone sword keys. But now I have a lot. The reason is that obviously on first playthrough I was just going everywhere. Uh, Think about not knowing where actual like good shit is in terms of for your build. Not that I'm free to like look that shit up. It just makes things a lot easier. God, this thing is so broken. It is so broken. Do I want to be doing a cave right now? I am uh, not so sure. Especially not a goddamn poison cave. Unexpected. And definitely not welcome. Oh, did you see that thing was already on the ground? Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, I'm using... Uh, using all the wrong flasks. Again, I kind of didn't want to be... 
dragged into this. I don't even know why I moved forward. Looks like it's too late now. Luckily, at the end of the day, we have Carrie and Slicer to take care of shiz for us. 600 damage. Why do they gotta put a poison swamp into every Souls game? I mean, this is an optional area, which at least there's that. But there's still one in every single one of the games. And I know, don't worry, I know about the Lake of Rot and all its loveliness. Which just... I couldn't think of a more annoying gameplay mechanic if I wanted to. When you, like, go to the Lake of Rot or even, like, think about the idea of the Lake of Rot. Ha ha ha! I can Alright, I kinda like this thing a lot, still. Jesus, it's so powerful. Am I screwed? So you don't have any power over me, I'm already poisoned. Are you seeing that HP? And are you seeing my wonderful technique? <laughs> I'm quite a combatant. Jesus, this thing is absolutely insane. I'm talking about Carrion Slicer. And there isn't even anything in here. Aside from the, well, that enemy. Mushroom. Oh, oh, is that a set? Interesting. Fa Last of Us 2 Fashion Souls? Could be. And as you've probably guessed, I am completely goddamn lost. Uh, I think it's probably time to get the hell out of Dodge. Oh, no. I mean, it would be smart to get the hell out of dodge. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it. Part of me is interested in this whole shebang. Why do they deal so much damage? I know, I was going in there carrying Slicer, just blasting, but still. Is 8k souls or runes worth it? Probably not. This cave looks like a bit of a nightmare so what I'm gonna do is we'll peace out we've wasted like eight minutes on this and we'll just move on to Gelmir the actually important stuff I'll go back and clear that out off screen what the hell you know, I honestly thought, because it was a stone sword key type cave, that it was just going to be a shortcut, you know, like back to the upper upper area uh, or something like that, but it's not. It's like a whole ass dungeon. And usually these types of dungeons contain good stuff, like Terra Magica, which we picked up in the last episode. Oh well. This is where we need to go or get to and first things first I am going to ignore the castle uh, and just move to the side I am in the right place right some of these just sort of all gel together or merge together in my mind and I don't even know but I'm fairly sure I am in the right place we just need to get over that way No, I'm definitely in the right place. Those guys are having a bit of a party. We'll let them. 
There's also some doll sim heads here. And of course, a lovely magma worm field boss, which I don't actually mind. This thing works as a field boss. It doesn't really work as anything else. Believe me. Oh, what the hell? What the shit was that? <laughs> All right. I just got one shot. And that is an understatement. Is this how we're gonna be, Mount Galmir? One shot city? Jesus. Okay, right away from it. But people wonder why I just, you know. Oh, fucking. That wasn't the lava. Just the lava, lava. It was his lava. It does so much damage. And I do so little damage. Yeah, he's insanely strong. I just realized this guy, like... He does the same thing that Lawrence does from Bloodborne. That sort of, like, crawl on the ground thing. I'm always on the lookout for what they ripped off from their own games. This thing is an absolute nightmare to deal with. Uh, like Lawrence. Just... What a boss, right? What a boss. Did I just say that this thing works in the open field? I might have to take that back. Well, it works better than when they shove him into the tiny ass like little cave in Kaelid. That's one of the biggest nightmares you could imagine it's 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 absolutely horrible i mean i might just have to go like real cheapo with this boss She just has so much HP. Come on, Torrent, your feet can... Your feet can hold out. You have metal-ass feet. It's actually probably not, not even gonna be enough. Um, can I do this? I can. Maybe let's try the rock sling. Although if I remember correctly, this thing might be resistant to it. 447. Okay, I'm gonna need to heal torrent. Oh, is that... Oh, yeah, that's his second phase when he stands up like an idiot. Oh, fuck. Don't even think about hitting me. Let's get the Cerulean. At this point... I'm playing it safer than safe, believe me. Yeah, just fire that thing off in the distance. And I must have been like way stronger when I came here uh, on my first playthrough. Because I distinctly remember this boss being actually fairly easy. Uh, well, I, of course, because I came to Galmir after the capital. Imagine if it just one-shots me. It totally could happen. Like, I'm saying imagine if it one-shots me because I see it happening. That was... God-awful. Well, it wasn't the worst, but... 
we need to drama it up a little bit. It adds to the excitement of an episode. Oh fucking hell, what the hell was that? Bro! You know what? Screw your little grenades. Yeah, there's demi-humans here. No checkpoint. Anyways, yeah, again. I still rather deal with this dragon out here than in the uh, closed off little circular arena. That is absolutely insane, whatever that is. I'm sure we can't get it. Usually this is the type of shit <laughs> that you, you cannot get. Uh, even it, though it would be nice. Um, but maybe I'm wrong. Anyways, what you need to do here, there's a bear up. Further on up. It's elegant, right? Horse combat is quite something in this game. Um, and that's all I'll, I'll say about that. That it's something. It happens. Wrong item. Believe me, this is all leading to something very crucial. Uh, I'm not just doing this air part of Gelmir uh, for fun. First of all, we have this roiling magma. This is the first of the magma sorceries. Uh, well, it kind of does what it says on the tin. The deal with magma so sorceries is that they scale off of faith. Again, as I mentioned, that this this game has a bunch of weird scaling, like magic and stuff like that. This is one of those where. Yeah, again, it scales off of your your thing, your faith. She's not unworkable, because, you know, these types of spells, so like sorceries and all that, have their own advantages, like how they work. So if you're a faith build and you still want to pick this thing up, go for it. I don't even think I can attune it. Maybe like no no C twelve faith. I can't read the description here. That's annoying. Uh, let's get some lore on roiling magma. One of the sorceries developed from the magma of Mount Gelmir fires a lump of condensed magma that explodes a short delay after hitting the target. Charging enhances potency and further delays the explosion. After discovering the ancient hexes of Gelmir, Rikard, son of Queen Renala brought them back into practical use as new forms of sorcery. Yeah, because if you didn't know, Rikard is Renala's kid, so it makes sense. <laughs> okay, they emerge from among the sheep. Sheep, dog and wolf. You guys remember that game? Anybody remember that game? Sheep, dog and wolf? That game was kind of sick. Couldn't beat it when I was a kid. Some of the later levels were super difficult in my view. That's because I was a stupid kid. Yep. Hit and run. Actually, it doesn't run. Actually, do these things take any damage from magic? The virgins. What the hell are you doing? Okay, they take damage from... <laughs> Don't tell me that's not out of Looney Tunes, right? That's straight up some Looney Tunes type shit. Unbelievable. Anyways... As fun as that was, uh, it's not really what we're here for. Instead, we're here for some bud. 
Yeah, Hermit Village. Listen, I'll come back through here later. Just we have some important things to take care of. So we have demi human queen Maggie, who is challenging me in sorcery. She wants a sorcery battle, and she's gonna she's gonna get it. Uh, okay, maybe I'm gonna get it. Don't worry. This is all under control. Especially since she happens to... Yeah. I know, I know how that looks. I know how that looks. I couldn't have timed that more perfectly. Uh, that's why I script out all my YouTube videos. All of this was naturally planned. I just have to like blast my way through here. Yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. The teamwork. The teamwork and me not having any poise. Oh, fuck. Elden Ring. By the way, I just realized something that I just straight up lost all my runes that I got from the magma worm, didn't I? By dying there. I think I did. Uh, that is... That is fairly shitty now that I give it some thought. In fact, that is incredibly shitty. Only reason I'm not so torn up is because I just have a I just noticed I have a ton of consumable runes, so what I'm probably gonna spend some time on is going back to the round table in a little bit. We need to probably level up our weapon and all that anyways. And then I'll spend some time like using up runes too. How should we play this? We're gonna play like this. I'm gonna go down there and kill this thing with melee. Not get crushed like before. I mean she's big so you know she has the size advantage for sure. What she doesn't have is the magic advantage, which I have. Want to see some real spells? Eat some rocks. See, of course, when she uses that thing, it's very powerful. When I do, eh. Oh, come on. Oh, I'm out of stamina. It's all good. Stay cool. Should I bring out my secret weapon? I think I should. The secret weapon being carry and slicer. And it worked. Not 100% due to carry and slicer, but... We'll give it some credit. Hey, that's a free memory stone. And, more importantly, there's the boy. Yeah, you talk to him, which is <laughs> really weird. Um, yeah, and we get Comet Azure, which is pretty sick. It's all I'm here for. Because this thing... Let me tell you about Comet Azure. I don't think I need to. Fire is a tremendous comet within a starry torrent. Legendary sorcery devised by Azure Primeval Sorcerer. Fire is a tremendous comet in a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
The place had to be the origin of Glenstone Hall to continue releasing the sorcery's power. And there is the rub. Uh, this combined with this combined with this results in something pretty special. Obviously this needs 60 int. Uh, you might notice that I do not have 60 int currently. But one day we will have 60 int. By the time it becomes necessary we will be we will be there and then Comet Azure is gonna be... well it's a little bit spicy that spell. I'll, t I'll tell you that much. It's, it's a little bit spicy. I think I'm gonna do what I talked about. Let's head back to the round table hold and take a look around there. Okay, so the first thing we need to check out is weapon upgrades. In fact, yeah, I can't do the weapon. I'm missing Sombersmith 7, which I'll, I'll need to look up where you can get that. Uh, but what I want to start upgrading is... Where the hell is it? Should equip it to make it a bit easier. In fact, that's gonna be the the easiest easiest way. Is where the hell is it? The carry and glint blade staff. Wasn't easy to find, but yeah, we need to slowly start working our way towards upgrading, and we've already run out, but that's okay because this is the type of stuff we can actually buy. I'm also gonna check whether I can Spirit Tune, not him. The other one I'm going for is Oleg, who I haven't even used, and not him. Yeah, this is just the stuff I wanted to do initially, and we'll get around to all the other important bits. I think think we can... oh shit, do I not have... I do. Uh, we need one of these and I actually don't know if we need any of these. Probably not. This is the annoying thing, they, they could have moved these two NPCs <laughs> a little bit closer together. Uh, I get it because of the layout and all that, but... In Dark Souls 3, for example, Andre and the merchant are like three steps away from each other, which for convenience sake is very good. Yeah. Plus 17, that is not bad. And as you see, the reason this thing is pretty good is that it already has an S scaling with intelligence. And as you can see, the sorcery scaling is already higher than the meteorite staff. Uh, again, what I saw and read about is true, so shout out to whoever put that together. Uh, the simple fact is, after 40 int, the meteorite staff starts dropping. And I know currently the difference is not too big, but sort of as we have like if if we had gone along the sort of efficiency of the meteorite staff would have started dropping uh, plus I think this is the one that increases the yeah the glint blade sorceries so carrion slicer is gonna be even more ridiculous if you can believe that alright first things first Popradon Sorry, Ray Don. Uh, just had to be done. Look, I didn't even use up all of them, and this already put me at almost 100k, which is gonna allow us to level up. Actually, that's quite a few. 
Hmm. Man, that 45 is tempting, but what I'm gonna do is get to 44 and spend a bit on HP as well as needed. All right. Well, I think the only thing to sum up here or the only way to sum this up is that we are in a very, very good place. Uh, we have all of the puzzle pieces really to overpower ourselves towards the end game, uh, which is really special. That's, that's really what you want. Uh, we'll do the rest of Mount Gelmir again. We'll go through. It's a pretty easy area. Pick up a couple of items, boss souls, you know, the usual boss souls, but runes from bosses and all that. Shaded castle. And I can do it. It's not really relevant. Yeah, I'll do it. It's an interesting area. I didn't really show it in my first playthrough, just briefly. And then, yeah, it's back to the capital where we will have sort of more, more things to do. All right. Oh, I just realized Selen's questline. We can now advance it now that you talk to Azur. Cool. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. If you did enjoy this episode of Elden Ring, make sure to give this video a like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, and I will catch you next time. Peace out and goodbye.